Here's to the journey. The unforgettable adventures. The epic quests. The decades of discoveries. We found each other through a shared passion for games. More than just a company, a family. With an unwavering belief in people and what we could make together. For the last 35 years, we've grown. From a small basement in Maryland to studios and offices around the world. Together, we brought our dreams to life. Worlds that inspire creativity and chaos. Worlds where players are free to leave their own mark. From snow-covered peaks to the fiery depths of hell post-apocalyptic wastelands, and beyond. Here's to the games we've made and to the games we'll make tomorrow. Here's to staying true to the vision that inspired it all. A legacy built with love, respect, and a dedication to excellence. And here's to you for being there with us through it all. Merci beaucoup. A new chapter has begun. Ears to the journey, just getting started. Hi everyone, this is Aaron Greenberg, the head of games marketing at Xbox. We are here at the headquarters of Bethesda in Maryland. It is a truly special day, and we wanted to take you behind the scenes to hear from the creators, hear from the team members about what it means for Bethesda to join Xbox in this roundtable. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the head of marketing and PR at Bethesda. You know him, Pete Hines. Good to see you, sir. Thanks, Thanks for coming out to see us. Good to be here. Thank all of you for, for joining us. Um, I want to start by introducing our colleague who could make the trip out here, um, but is going to be joining us on the roundtable today, and that would be Bond, Sarah Bond, joining us all the way from the other side, head of head of partnerships at <laughs> Xbox. And that was pretty good. I, you have to introduce yourself. That was awesome. Right? <laughs> it's good to see you, Pete. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, to my right here, we have two Aaron's. We decided to stick all of our Aaron's over on this side of the room to make it really easy to keep track. In addition to Aaron Greenberg, we've got Aaron Losey, our Vice President of Global Marketing and Communications. This gentleman needs no introduction. All of you should know who he is. Phil Spencer. Thank you for coming out to see us, Phil. Thanks for having us. Exciting. Uh, and speaking of people who need no introduction, legendary game developer and my good friend uh, Todd Howard from Bethesda it's Game It's great Series. to see you in person. F finally. Fidelity is sick. Uh, is this a Teams call? <laughs> like a year ago that we got <laughs> to that. see He's you. He's already doing Microsoft ads. <laughs> definitely, definitely <laughs> not. Good plug. Soon. Good plug. <laughs> Check. Are we getting awesome. royalties on those plugs? Get it all in. How does this work? You can see you've had the second dose of the Kool Aid. That's good. <laughs> so, so as Aaron said, we're, we're here today to talk about this amazing partnership of, of Bethesda and Xbox coming together. And I, I want to start, Phil, with you because you're the one who made all of this happen and had the vision for what this might be. And I wonder if you could start by sort of giving us your own words on how did this all come about. Yeah, what an exciting time for our fans. I see it in the community. I see it in the industry. People want to know what's going to come. We're bringing all of these creative teams together. We know at Gamers Play Games, and we knew our focus on our first party and our ability to build great games for Xbox fans 
was critically important to not only where we are, but where we're going. And the conversations we've had with you and the team here over the years have been instrumental to what we've done to date. So the opportunity to strengthen that relationship even further uh, starting now will just be awesome. Okay, I mean, we're finally here. Like, I feel like we've been building towards this day forever. It's you know, we get that because we got a lot of questions, all of us over the months about, well, what are you going to do here? What are you going to do here? And we said it a couple times, but I'm not sure everybody heard it. <laughs> they didn't believe like, us. We, we weren't <laughs> able, like, w there was no decision making going on between the organizations. You guys have been running as Bethesda for all this time. We've been, which, like you said, seems like it's been a long time. We've been running as Xbox. So now we can actually start to sit down and really build our plans together. And that, I can't yeah, wait. This is, this is day awesome. one. I mean, yeah. But it is fun to see. But people just can't believe it's real. Even the official, official announce, like pe seeing fans retweet, I still can't believe this is real. And the excitement of what this means for gamers, what this means for dev teams, like, you know, for us, like we're, we could not be more excited. We've worked with you guys for years. We've been fans for years. But now, like, we're family. And that's a really exciting thing. First of all, it's just incredible to be sitting next to you in person after so many months of, of team calls and getting to know each other. Um, so thank you uh, for, for both taking the time to come out and, and join us here in Rockville. Um, Todd, as someone who's been here since almost the beginning, I'd love your perspective on, on what this means to you. It's uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of excitement. It's, you know, also, it's just surreal. I have to be honest. Like, even if it wasn't COVID and we're doing all of this, just this moment in our company's history would be surreal for myself and everybody who's been here. Uh, for a very long time. You know, our company has had a lot of chapters, but when I think about it, e each of those is marked by or doing that with many of the folks at Xbox through every generation of consoles and technology. And when we sort of thought about what the future would bring, the games that we want to create, you know, Phil is someone I'm always calling and bouncing things off of. And as we talked, it became clearer and clearer that this kind of partnership was where we wanted to go with all of the games we were doing. Well, speaking of partnership, we, we have a, a head of partnership sitting right there. Sarah, th this is something obviously you've been a big part of at Xbox. What, what was your take on how this process evolved and the idea of, hey, you know, Bethesda joining Xbox, becoming part of the same team? What, what were your thoughts when you first started hearing about it? You know, in a lot of ways, it, it was very similar to what Todd just said. You know, always from the beginning, whenever we were thinking about our plans or our vision for gaming or what we wanted to do next, you guys were the first people we called. Like we would run things by you. We would have really great discussions about the vision for gaming, the future of Xbox. And in a lot of ways, it was something we formed together. Uh, and one of the things we did out of that, right, is you guys were early supporters of Game Pass um, and you worked with us and you gave us feedback and we got to just see together the incredible value it creates for both players and creators. And that really was the natural evolution that created the opportunity for this awesome partnership and for us to come together, be on one team. And so I, you know, just how you say you think of the future of gaming and you didn't see a future of gaming without Xbox. We just didn't see a future for Xbox without Bethesda. Now, we know you all have a lot of questions. We've gotten a lot of questions since we announced this deal. But one of the one of the biggest ones, Phil, is this question about exclusivity and how you think about that and how that's going to work with, with Bethesda. Yeah, I see it. I see it in the community. I, I listen to the podcasts and all the questions. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be as clear as I can because uh, I, I, that's what I, I, I just think it's fair. So obviously, I can't sit here and say every Bethesda game is exclusive because we know that's not true. There's contractual obligations that we're gonna see through, as we always do in every one of these instances. We have games that exist on other platforms, and we're gonna go support those games um, on the platforms they're on. There's communities of players, we love those communities, and we'll continue to invest in them. And even in the future, there might be things that have either contractual things or legacy on different platforms that we'll go do. But if we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. And that's our goal, that's why we're doing this, that's the root of this partnership that we're building, um, and the creative capability we will be able to bring to market for our Xbox customers is gonna be the best it's ever been for Xbox after we're done here. Okay, Sarah, so Phil was just talking about Game Pass and how important that is to Xbox. Um, you're obviously heavily involved in Game Pass. Talk to us a little bit about what folks can expect here in the near future. 
Well, we're just getting started, right? But as part of that, one of the things that we're excited about is starting tomorrow, 20 games from Bethesda are actually going to be available in Game Pass, which is just awesome and represents just the beginning of, you know, the collaboration across our team. So we're actually going to be posting this in social. People can go check it out. All the games are going to be available. And it's just the beginning of some great things to come. And, and to be clear, that's across all of our studios. We've got eight studios around the world. Every kind of game you could imagine, RPGs, first-person shooters, no matter what you're into, you need to check Game Pass tomorrow because, man, there's an awful lot of content going in there. And I yeah. think folks are going to love it. You think it's, about the, the future there. I think people don't appreciate, you know, consumers see Game Pass as, like, just give me games. Um, I have lots of games. But then as a creator it really unlocks some things that maybe you wanted to do, or will this find an audience, or there's certain types of games that maybe in the past could kind of get lost sometimes. Um, and having that kind of avenue to make a game and release a game opens up so many things, a lot of things that our company and all our studios, they really, really love to do. So from, the, from the creator side, it's also just you know awesome. Well, I have, a, I have a coworker that literally has gone on and on with me about Fallout 76 and saying, oh, I went in and started playing Fallout 76 and when it came into Game Pass and I've been thrilled with the community and just like how supportive it is. And it's like arguably one of the healthiest gaming communities out there, especially for new players. And that's been a great benefit to hopefully having more players in that, in that community. It really is. And 76, while you mention it, is something where it's another sort of point in my mind with our relationship where when that game launched, you know, the litany of issues we had and we just, we let a lot of people down and, well, there was very little we didn't screw up, honestly. And one of the people that um, I called was Phil. And I said, hey, you know, there's so many things we're dealing with. What advice do you have? And he put me in touch with some people at Xbox who were able to look at all of the games in the system and what was important and wasn't, what, what wasn't important to the other games that made it for the long haul. And that kind of advice really, really helped us. And now, you know, seeing 76 be one of the most played games on Xbox, we're just, you know, incredibly fortunate to be there. Yeah, Game Pass allows creative freedom. Um, and that we have seen that with all of the creators that we've worked with with Game Pass across the ecosystem. It's one of the things I think is most beautiful about it is it actually gives you access to an audience that, um, that you may not have otherwise been able to reach. It's helped games that people may have never discovered actually get played. And it's actually empowering creativity. And I just think that that's a cool cool thing and it was cool to hear Todd say it too. So Los, obviously games is a big part of what we do here and how we interact with our fans, but I think the way that Bethesda chooses to approach how we talk to our fans, how we interact with our fans is a big part of who we are, which you've obviously been a huge part of since, you, since you've been here. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think it's, it's about dialogue, right? It's about a two-way conversation with our fans and we never want them to feel like we're talking at them because that does nothing for them and it does nothing for us. So, you know, as we host events, whether they're digital or, or in person, it's about the whole experience. Who do they get to talk to? Who do we get to talk to? It's not about just, you know, churning a certain number of people through through a kiosk to put their hands on a game. I mean, that's that's obviously an important part of it. But I think we look at it as the people are just as important as, as the games. And, you know, having the opportunity to work with you, Aaron, over the last few months and planning, it, it's just so refreshing to see how aligned we are in our approach to, to treating fans. I agree. I'd just love to say, like, it's been incredible to see your obsession with fans and how much you kind of start there about putting yourself in the eyes of the gamer and how they'll react to things and how you've shaped things, how you've thought about things and how you've not been shy about telling us like, less of this, more of that. Like, I have not been no, shy like, at all. It makes us better. I think, I think we had like a, a, little, a little fight over email in our first two days. No, it was, um, it, we tell it how we it want, is. I think yeah. authenticity uh, no. is, is a big part of, of who we are too. Aaron. <laughs> I, I won, I, I definitely won. Todd, I wanted you to talk a little bit about something that you preached a lot when I first got here in 99, which is a willingness to throw stuff out and start all over again. You sort of um, champion this idea that you can't be beholden to any feature that's in your game before. And when you hear Phil talk about how rapidly things change in this industry, I think a lot of what we do as Bethesda comes from you in terms of your approach to development and being willing to try new things to push, to push boundaries. Yeah, one of our, our mottos in the studio, and it, it came in the company for a while, is great games are played, uh, not made. You can have the best design. You know, this is a genius idea. 
Um, but you never know how it's going to feel like that, you know, what makes something fun uh, in, in your hands. And when we think about the future of games and our ability to, to make them, that doing this together and this kind of partnership, and it's going to sound cliche, like they believe it or don't believe it, but we have a firm belief that we're going to make the best games we could possibly make by doing this. Um, so whereas I think it's great to have all of these games under one umbrella, like what does that mean at the end of the day to the games you're looking at? It's for us, they're going to be even better than the way we were going to be doing them. Um, and that's the ability to tap into everything at Xbox, um, to tap into everything that we've done in the past and, and, and solve those problems really together. And something I want to build on there, our aspiration is to have literally billions of people experience the great games that uh, both our, our, our teams build and our partners. And through the, you know, the power of our console and PC and xCloud and that continued growth that we have, my aspiration, my goal, my hope is that the next games that come out of Bethesda will be the most played games in the history of the, uh, of the studio's organization. It's, you know, it, it is about reaching more players. As you say, it's about games that are played uh, and finding those players wherever they are as we continue to expand the great capability of, of gaming to more and more people. Uh, that, I think, is just, that's, that's going to be so fun to watch as people around the planet get more and more ability to experience the things that Bethesda is capable of building. Hey, Sarah, so when Phil starts talking about this ecosystem and, and widening the number of people that are able to play games like ours, obviously, as somebody who's in charge of partnerships, that's a pretty giant undertaking in terms of the number of people that you're now dealing with. How, how, what, what does Bethesda being part of Xbox now do for you in terms of the partnerships that you're making and how you're able to grow Xbox beyond its current boundaries to something much bigger and broader? Yeah, I mean, it's just like this fundamental acceleration to our vision, like the, the ability to actually make it possible for someone to play Bethesda games, you know, on any device, if it's PC, if it's console, but also a mobile device or any other type of smart screen in the future is just incredible. And, you know, partners look at you guys partnering with us and they feel even more passionate about that vision. Um, and so it just, it dramatically accelerates our ability to just reach players around the world. Can I More jump on that a second? Yeah. Like for us, our old games, seeing them get out, they used to worry that like, unlike movies or other forms of entertainment, gaming has this technology barrier where can I experience the old ones? And I think gamers, I hope they appreciate it, but they don't appreciate it much the, the technical marvel that the backwards compatibility <laughs> is on mm. the system. The fact that you can load up Oblivion first game Aaron and Losi and I worked on together, um, and run it in 4K on your Xbox now, and that's on game. For a creator to have that still have life is just awesome. That's great. And the teams yeah. are already working on adding FPS boost to a number of those titles too, which I know we're gonna announce soon, Ooh. not today, but soon. So, so, but that's right. You, without having to touch the code, you can basically take backward compatible games, take full advantage of the new hardware, and get things like uh, FPS boost is just another win for gamers. Okay, so we, we did say that we were going to be like light on news. This is not a news event, but we talked about uh, Game Pass, and folks are going to want to know, like, hey, when are we going to get some information on what you all are doing together now that you're starting? So, low Greedy, what, what can they expect? Well, uh, one, I want to get through today first before we start planning. <laughs> That's an admirable goal. Thing, but, I like um, it. We, we've been having uh, lots of discussions. We are deep in planning mode, and it's been awesome because even as we've talked about, we think about content, we think about how we produce things, like we actually use a lot of the same teams. We think about stuff in the same ways. So even the process of people don't realize, but when you go put, you know, historically it was like the E3, you know, event or whatever, you put on a show, you do a digital thing, like people don't realize that that takes months and months of preparation. And so we are, we are in that planning phase. We are looking at content, we are thinking about content. So now that we are officially one team, uh, this is sort of the opportunity now for us to move at even more accelerated pace, but it's been, it's been fun. Greeny's dancing. He, he's not giving an answer. What's the We'll answer? have something this summer. This is summer? Hey. Thank you, Losi. Perfect, right. thank you. Okay, you heard it from Losi. You're gonna hear this summer. Uh, we're gonna take summer a Summer officially ends when? They just uh, wanna give whenever. us Whenever, it's, all, it's <laughs> okay. all over the globe. So we're going to let Sarah and Todd get back to work, uh, and we're going to be joined by Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios, and Todd Vaughn, our senior vice president of development, right after this community spotlight.
Our fans are the most important aspect of our games. <laughs> this is their world. We created it, but it's their world. It is pretty amazing to have a community that's been around for this long. Here's a little show of the armor. It's very heavy. This community is full of so many passionate people. Oh, yeah. There are people who love the games that we love, so they're very important to us. The community inspires us to push ourselves even more. They're not just players, they kind of become your friends and they become a part of your life. Each time we make a new game, they're there, ready to jump into these worlds and experience them with us. <laughs> they're a family in a way, and this becomes the Bethesda family, oh and God. I'm just proud to be a part of it. Welcome back. So that was a look at some of the amazing fans and their creations around our games and studios. And what a great segue, because games and studios is what we're here to talk about. Joining us from Washington is the head of Xbox Game Studios, Matt Booty. Matt, welcome. Hi, Pete. How are you? Good. Matt, for folks who may not be familiar with you, tell them a little bit about what you do, your career, how, how you got to Xbox. Tell us about Matt Booty. Well, I've got yeah, I've got the great privilege of working with all our teams across uh, Xbox Game Studios, all the teams, all the studios, all the great people. Uh, coming up on 11 years here at Xbox, working with the team and working with Phil, and I've had the good fortune to work on things like bringing Mojang into Xbox and also many of the studios that we've added over the last five to six years. Sorry, that studio, you said Mojang? It, it sounds familiar. Did they, did they make anything? <laughs> yeah. after, oh, the Minecraft they make this, guys, right. Small team. Yeah, maybe <laughs> just, Minecraft. Just a maybe little thing. Heard of it. Just a little thing like Mojang. And, and, and Phil, Phil was mentioning that you're kind of the Katamari of studios, that basically you've added how many studios now to, to Xbox Game Studios? <laughs> Six? <laughs> yeah, well, we've uh, we've grown quite a bit. We're at 15 now, so we've wow. added seven over the last uh, few years. Seven. That's more than double. That's that, one of that's many amazing. nicknames Phil's got for me. <laughs> We That's the only one the I was one. told I was allowed to use uh, during this, so we'll, we'll go with that one. Well, Matt, thank you so much for, for joining us. Great to have you here. And also with us is my longtime friend, the man who is responsible for me being at Bethesda. Todd Vaughn recruited me to that. Bethesda back that. in 1999, our senior vice president of development, Todd Vaughn. TV, I view you as the biggest unknown secret in this industry. You're a genius. And I want you to explain to folks who you are, when you got here, your background. I, I actually started in the games industry with, with PC Gamer Magazine. Mm -hmm. This was in the 90s. And I got recruited to join then Bethesda before ZeniMax. So it was just right before. And I joined Bethesda to basically, you know, scout games and, and to be a, a biz dev to help on the publishing side of, of the business. And it's one of those phenomenon where, you know, once you get the fish, you got to clean them and you, you start going down that path. And, and I ended up being a lot more involved in the production and the development. And as ZeniMax was forming, you know, Robert came in and started ZeniMax and, and had a mission and an agenda. And right out of the gate, the first part of that mission was to really set up our internal team, Bethesda Game Studios, and put them on a path for success. Matt, I want to I want to ask you, when you look at the kind of studios that Bethesda has and the kind of games that, that we make, what is it about what we do that resonates with you and, and that makes you feel like it's such a good partnership? And we've been sitting here talking about what a great partnership it is, but from your perspective, head of development, you get to work with all of these studios. How do you see all of those things combining together in sort of a common DNA? You know, if you look at the, some of the commonality of all the studios that we've acquired over the last few years, I think the thing that stands out is that so many of them are creator-led. Uh, the founders are game designers. The founders are game creators. Uh, and most of the culture flows down from that creative aspect, from that game design aspect. You know, uh, I think Todd uh, Howard said it earlier, you know, games aren't made, they're played, right? And I think that that uh, resonates with most of our studios. Uh, as we've been having sort of get-to-meet-you calls and spending more time with all of the Bethesda studios, 
it really has stood out that that's the same for your studios, that they are creator-led, they're design-led, uh, and they also have such a focus on the players and bringing the players into that design process, making sure that once a game is out there even, that as it evolves and as it grows community, with community being such an important part of what we do these days, uh, I think that's another real similarity that we've just got a, a real fan focus, a real player focus, and uh, that connects all the way back up to the top where all of our studios really start first with the creator, the designer, and the game idea. I think as part of that, Matt, a lot of people don't realize, but you've set up the structure as you've added Ninja Theory or Obsidian or NXI, all these different teams, like to allow them to have, like almost like stay in a bubble so they still have that ability to go create what they want to make. Like we don't tell them what games to make, but how would you describe that environment and how you've learned from the Mo Yang piece? And then how will that apply as we think about integrating the Bethesda teams uh, into our first party, you know, um, Xbox teams? How do we, how do you kind of think about, about that and, and how that makes better games? You know, I, I think back to the Minecraft Mo Yang days, I think we were just a few days into it and our CEO Satya Nadella said something, I think it was in an email. He said, you know, we, have as much to learn from them as they have to learn from us. And that always has stuck with me, uh, that our job isn't to come in and sort of uh, force a culture on them. Games, I like to think about, it's almost like a greenhouse, right? The environment in which they're designed is so important, is so critical. And the last thing that we want to do is upset that. So uh, there's very much a keep your ears open, keep, keep your eyes open. What do we have to learn from this group of people that have been making games for 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, there's obviously a lot to learn there. We were talking yesterday, TV and, and Pete and I, about synergies between studios. And, and I obviously, having worked here for a long time, know about a lot of them. Um, but he was even bringing up stuff that I didn't know about you know, collaborating and learning from one another. And, and TV, I was hoping you could just share uh, how we operate and, and, sh and share tech and, and ideas, because I think it's pretty interesting. It frankly has evolved organically. You know, I think, you know, that idea of sort of like central planning and everybody, you know, uh, you know g being given or provided directly from uh, central sources isn't, isn't quite the, the, the right approach, especially as how we've grown. We grew organically. We added teams over time. Uh, they came in with different bits of knowledge that, that we really didn't know uh, that some groups had and some groups didn't. So we had to kind of figure things out as we went. And we led, it led to uh, sort of a lot, of, a lot of little happy surprises and collaborations that, frankly, you wouldn't plan for. Um, you know, there's some little-known facts of, like, teams who've worked on other projects. Machine Games is probably one of our most successful teams from, from a collaboration standpoint. They've probably worked on everything. <laughs> Pretty much at this point, uh, yeah. You know, uh, e even before, I think it was probably either right before or when we, we, were, uh, we were acquiring machine games, they, they were already working on Skyrim. <laughs> uh, of course. I, I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic team. You know, there's, a, there's an enemy that's in Doom 2016 that Tango made that I don't think anybody realizes. In, including Losi and I. Yeah, that's, that's the one that I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I and, thought I knew everything. And a lot of our secrets that we have, like, so oftentimes it's like, you know, if, if people have some down, downtime, some cycles, they'll, they'll want to participate or collaborate, and we share them evenly, you know, across teams uh, and allow them to do that directly. Um, then we have the more, you know, uh, obvious ones, like Arcane Leon and, and Machine Games collaborated on Youngblood. Uh, it's a lot of collaboration. Um, and I think it, it largely stems from them. They're just fans of one another's work, yeah. right? Like, it's not that you have said, okay, I need you to go over here, over here. And we'll hear from a lot of those studio heads later today. And I think that you'll you'll see that and hear that in their own words about, you know, really admiring one another's work and that it does feel like a family. Well, one of the unique things we do that, that most folks don't know about, Aaron, I wonder if you want to tell folks about is like what we do at the midwinter meeting and that every developer and, and how they present, that that's just not something that happens. Talk a little bit about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the most special time of year and that might sound cheesy, but it's true. I mean, everyone that works at Bethesda is so passionate. Like what better week could you spend than checking out really early looks at, at all the wonderful things that the creators are making. So um, it, it's, it's not just taking a look at what, e each other is doing. It's it's meeting the teams, meeting with one another, and sharing stories and techniques, and and it's it's or getting super excited for each other's projects. You yeah. know, the folks at Arcane start freaking out when they see you know the next 
machine games title or they all get to see Doom Eternal for the first time, you know, when it's been in development for six months. But it's still and, really And fun. we use it in marketing, too, to look at things and say, you know, what's resonating in, in, as we, you know, summer shows take many months of yes. planning. So we always use that as well as kind of a first litmus test. Like, well, let's let everyone in the company see it first and, and give feedback and I love that. that. It's like you're it's like you're you're making a recipe and there's like a head chef but you've included everyone in the kitchen to kind of contribute and and taste and contribute and lots of people in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. the midwinter mm -hmm. thing is great. So so I will say tell you Matt does something very similar with his teams. And I love the name of this meeting, Matt. Can you talk about the best meeting and like what that is about because <laughs> I will tell you that is my absolute favorite meeting and I just like the collaboration of what comes out of that and the spirit of that is is something really special. Yeah, I think best actually stood for something. We used to do uh, call them quarterly reviews, but it turns out that we weren't reviewing and they weren't happening <laughs> quarterly. So we decided. But it was a great name otherwise, else. other than it having <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with the meeting. It was for great. me. Uh, they really are the best meeting because all we do uh, for an entire morning is review uh, work in progress, a lot like Aaron was just talking about. So uh, everybody brings uh, the latest that they've got. We kind of cycle through all the studios. Sometimes it might be early concept work. Sometimes it's actually playable material. Um, and it's just a great chance for everybody to get feedback. You know, uh, hearing about the midwinter meeting, I think it was November 2019 before we uh, stopped being able to travel, but we had all of our studio heads together. And I remember just walking into that room thinking, wow, this represents, I think, something like 300 years of combined experience running studios, uh, working on games together. So it, it's really exciting when you get that sort of critical mass together of creatives. And I think it's gonna be pretty fantastic when we figure out how for the first time we can get all of our studio heads as Xbox and Bethesda together. And uh, you know, whether that's uh, the best midwinter meeting or the midwinter best <laughs> meeting, I don't know what it's gonna be, but it'll be fun when we can uh, just get everybody together in one place. And uh, as you say, kind of get that uh, creative synergy going. You know, as I listened to Matt talk about this previously about sort of um, sparking that enthusiasm, that passion, that, you know, that 300 years worth of experience that those studio heads have, that you are looking to bring together these folks who have a passion and then give them tools and resources, not just, hey, why don't you two make a game together, but, you know, TV, we've talked about studios going to each other for, hey, I want my guns to feel more like exactly. they do in the id game, or we're working on some new feature in our game that's that's new to us, kind of like Greeny was just talking about. That, yeah. that, that is a big part of... It's absolutely a big part, and and even to the point of the midwinter meetings, you know, it's as, as much as it is a, an ability to kind of show what we're working on and, you know, show the progress to the company and be excited by that, it's also kind of like a mini GDC, a game developers conference, where you can actually get from, you know world, you know, recognized, uh, you know, experts on a topic. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have little breakout sessions and meetings and summits. And, uh, you know, we've also looked to expand those throughout the year because it is a phenomenal resource. We have some incredible talent, you know, in animation, in AI, in, in, in you know, engine and rendering technology. And, you know, let's let's put some of that to use. Yeah, and they get to see it and they start asking questions, yep. emailing other programmers like, how in the hell did you do that? We've been trying to do that forever. And so, I, I, I mean, I, I think that kind of stuff is exactly what we're looking for here when we talk about like what this partnership might look like. It's not formally in saying, we now want you to work with them on this. It is just simply putting people in front of each other who might be trying something they've never done in a game or, you know, trying to, come up with a new way to do something that they haven't before, that that's really yeah, yeah. where you find that and, magic. And we don't put barriers up to prevent it, right? right. That's really the, the magic is it's like we want to create the connection so that people can find it and and build those relationships because they last and they're, they're durable and they'll stay for a long time. Well, and I think all of this, Phil, goes back to something that, that Matt said before, which I love, which is Satya's email saying, we have as much to learn from them as they do to us. And honestly, like that, that mentality that he brings and that you brings, I think is what excites all of us because you all are so willing to, to embrace that and say, look, you don't have to have every answer. You don't have to have it all figured it out. Let's, let's just talk and see if there's as opportunities here. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Todd and Matt, thank you both so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to come on and talk to us a little bit. I know you have a lot of studios and games to, to go work with, so we'll let you go. 
as we start to introduce you to more of our family and all the different studios and games that, that Bethesda has and is bringing to the table, Los, you've been with me forever. You've worked with all of these studios. Where do we start? I'd like to start from just about the beginning, a studio that I've had a privilege to work with for many, many years now. And th those are the men and women at ZeniMax Online Studios, the creators of The Elder Scrolls Online. A fantastic MMO. If you haven't played it, you're missing out. It's uh, a massive world, a ton of content. You're an ESO player. I am, and it's always, I'm always blown away by how big the world is. Like, he's, as a player, and that's kind of my only association with it, other than just seeing how amazing it's doing on Game Pass right now. <laughs> uh, but, like, the, the amount of diversity in that world, I love playing, great community. Uh, the, the players are so helpful. People, like, helping me get through, leveling up my characters. Fantastic game. Can't wait to hear more from the team. Absolutely. It's been a huge success, amazing community, and, and let's hear more from the folks at ZeniMax Online right now. Hey, I'm Matt Fyroar, Studio Director at ZeniMax Online Studios, or ZOS as we call it. Short history lesson. Back in 2007, ZOS was the first new studio at Bethesda, making us the test case for Bethesda being more than just a one studio publisher. And unlike the others who came later, we were built from the ground up with the specific goal of creating massive online games. The first of which was to be set in the Elder Scrolls world. Back in the day, as a fellow DC area game developer, I knew Todd Howard and some others at Bethesda. So when I started at the company, we had a relationship to build on. And that grew stronger after spending my first few months with the Bethesda team, working with Todd and Todd Vaughn to lay out the Elder Scrolls Online world. Everything from picking the setting and timelines of the game to creating factions and determining storylines. This spirit of close collaboration stuck with me as I built ZOS. In fact, several people from BGS joined ZOS, including Rich Lambert, who's now creative director of ESO. The relationships built with headquarters and BGS helped shape the kind of relationships we were creating internally as a studio grew. We share a focus on studio-driven creativity, which comes from the very top. And while we evolve separately, we always maintain that mutual trust with BGS, with headquarters, and later with the other studios in the extended Bethesda family. In fact, we pitched in and helped BGS with Fallout 76 and id with Doom 2016. But the most important shared cultural element that made us so successful has always been our core belief in ourselves that came directly from Robert Altman. An example, it's no secret that ESO stumbled when it launched in the beginning, but Robert didn't lose faith in us. You guys are smart, he said. It didn't go the way you wanted, so now you fix it. And we did fix it, and some of you might not know just how successful we've become. We're one of the most successful virtual world fantasy games period. Over 18 million users logging in from all over the world, 3 million new residents of Tamriel in just 2020 alone. ESO is huge, thousands of quests, and so much content it's impossible to count the hours. Obviously the credit to this success goes to the amazing and growing team at ZOS. But it was all made possible because Robert gave us the opportunity to realize our vision and then build, refine, and adjust as needed. It wasn't always pretty, and it definitely wasn't easy, but through it all, his belief in us and the promise of what we could deliver made us who we are today. And that extends to our future titles already in development. Everyone at ZOS is looking forward to being part of the Xbox family. Our friends there have already told us how they're such huge fans of ZOS, not just in the games we're making, but the people too. We can't wait to show you what's next when the time is right. Wow, I love that. I mean, it's so great to hear directly from the creator and to think what they've achieved in seven years, right? And today they're the number one multi-plat online role-playing game in the world. And we've seen it grow on Xbox, but when it went to, into Game Pass, it's just found a whole new audience. It, and, it's, uh, it's been a ter uh, terrific journey. And, and again, that, that community there, that, you know, that Phil referenced and, and Matt Fire referenced is, is an amazing support system. If you feel like you ready to make the leap, they're, they're ready to help you and, and have a great Absolutely. time. Um, all right, so Losi said that was a homegrown sort of internal studio that we started after Bethesda Game Studios. As TB mentioned before, the first acquisition we ever made was the creators of the first-person shooter genre in id Software. Oh. Doom, Quake, you know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Even God tier. I mean, let's be honest. They, like, they, they are best of the best. First shooter comes. I ever played on a PC, like on a floppy disk. Like yeah. how they got 3D graphics working back in the day. I mean, it's just, 
and how they've taken that and modernized it. The reboot in 2016, Doom Eternal winning, you know, so many Game of the Year awards. It's just incredible the legacy that they've had. And I, I tell you, there's a lot of Xbox fans excited. Well, it. when you talk about passion, it's hard to find folks who are more passionate than the folks at id Software. So why don't we take a look at uh, Marty Stratton and his amazing team at id Software. Hi, I'm Marty Stratton, studio director at id Software. About a month ago, we celebrated our studio's 30th anniversary. It really is incredible to consider how much our industry has changed in those 30 years and how many defining moments we've had the opportunity to be a part of. Wolfenstein 3D and Doom created and helped popularize the first-person shooter genre of games. Doom and Quake were among the first games to foster and build large-scale mod communities, as well as usher in multiplayer gaming. And our game engines have been at the heart of key advancements in technology licensing, 3D graphics acceleration, virtual reality, and game streaming. At any point in our studio's history, you could pull back the curtain and see a tight-knit group of people that thrive on pushing creative and technical boundaries, hard at work building fun first games with a meticulous attention to detail and craftsmanship. We couldn't be prouder of our people, our games, and our relationship with players. You know, when Bethesda purchased id back in 2009, we were the first independent game studio they had acquired. Although any number of fundamental changes could have come from that, what was immediately apparent and hasn't changed in more than a decade is that Bethesda shared that same pride and care for our people, culture, games, and community. From the start, Robert Altman and the entire Bethesda team said, we want you to be yourself and do what you do best. Then they backed that up with the resources, stability, and support to make it happen. Now game development is complicated and challenging, so it wasn't always smooth and almost never easy, but there simply wouldn't be a reboot of Doom in 2016 or its sequel Doom Eternal released last year without Bethesda's unwavering faith in the team at id. And it started at the top with Robert. His investment in our people and studio was always personal and genuine you couldn't help but want to make him and the rest of the company proud. Over the years, some of the most memorable and rewarding moments have come when that pride is also shared with an incredible community of gamers at our annual QuakeCon event here in Dallas. In 2014, we debuted our vision for a new Doom to an audience of 3,000 fans. And because that was so much fun, we did it again in 2018 with Doom Eternal. In both instances, the unbridled passion and enthusiasm for what we were doing has provided our team years of inspiration and motivation. As gamers, we see how important communities are to Xbox, so we can't wait for our new colleagues to experience their first QuakeCon. Since acquiring it, Bethesda has added a number of other incredible teams to their family of studios, several of which we've been fortunate to work with more intimately. In particular, our friends at Machine Games are close collaborators on id Tech and have done fantastic work with the most recent Wolfenstein games. We've experienced firsthand how valuable it is to share ideas, technology, and experience with our sister studios and can't wait to now expand that relationship with Xbox. As we like to say at the studio, we're grateful for all that has come before, but driven by what's ahead. We couldn't be more excited to start this new chapter with Bethesda and Xbox. You know, the thing about Doom and id that I think, we like to talk about the history of the studio, which is amazing, but you can see it in Doom Eternal. There's no studio that sweats every pixel on screen <laughs> of every frame <laughs> the way it does. Like, it's just so clear. Um, it's and like I you spend time that. with them. <laughs> Spend time with the games and it just pops. Like it, it's so clear. Uh, and then when you think about their capability and I think about them collaborating and working and talking with the coalition and 343 and just like the first person shooter, third person shooter space that we have, uh, the studios that are there, I think just kind of an amazing capability. The other thing I get really excited about with id that we haven't really talked a lot about is the future of id tech. And what could that mean inside of Xbox? 
Uh, obviously, you know, we've got a ton of studios doing a bunch of different work. I love the way Marty talked about how they've collaborated with other Bethesda studios yeah, yeah. on mm -hmm. InTech. And I, I just think about that to the next level. Like, what can we do inside of our organization with InTech, which is one of the, the world's best game engines out there, and just make it a tool that so many developers can use to realize their vision? With it, it's amazing because we didn't just get this, like, incredible library of IP we got all these amazing people who are so meticulous, as, as you can tell through their games, but we also inherited things like QuakeCon. And it's been very special for me to work at that event. And Marty mentioned, you know, showing off Doom 2016 mm -hmm. to 3,000 people. I was there, and I can tell you that the excitement was off the it charts. Was, it was religious. It was it, like it a was. religious experience. And the, the cool thing about that event and about the team is that those 3,000 people were the first people in the whole world to see the game. Yeah. Oh, you know, we that. didn't do some big media event. It was fans like- Fans first. Fans first. And these are the kind of interactions that we like to have. They come to that show year after year. And so they, they were the people that we wanted to show it well, to and first. And Los, as you were saying, sort of that two-way conversation, it's also important to point out, we showed 3,000 people Doom 2016 for the first time. Not a single thing leaked from any one of right. them. We said, put your phones down. This wow. is just for you. And every single one of them said, we get it, we love it, and we'll, we're totally on what board. And like to be able to, to have a studio extend that level of trust to a fan base and have the fan base reciprocate and say, hey, we're down. Like We won't, we won't take screenshots or videos. Or it, it's, it's part of what I think makes all of this so, so special. One of my favorite moments over the last 16 awesome. years, for sure. For That's sure. Great. And, and, you know, as we said, id Software was the, was the first acquisition we made, but that sort of started the snowball pretty quickly. And, and shortly after that, we, we had Machine Games come on board, um, both of the studios at Arcane in Lyon and, uh, and in Austin. And then um, Tango down in Japan was sort of one, two, three right afterwards. So let's, probably let's talk a little bit about all of those studios coming on board and, and what they do because, you know, Phil, you were just talking about shooters, which is something obviously id knows very much, but their tech and their, and their work went across all of those studios I just mentioned. You know, Machine Games coming in and rebooting Wolfenstein, this, yeah. this iconic franchise yeah. was... Yeah, because the new order runs on id tech, right? I mean, all... Yeah. yeah, everything Machine Games has done has, has run on id tech and Machine Games collaborating with them set a standard for for collaboration among studios that they then did with, with Arcane. So it was really interesting to see all of these folks come in together and sort of grab onto what we had started to establish with BGS and then Zoss and then id Software. Hello, I'm Jair Gustafsson, executive producer at Machine Games. Machine Games just turned 10 and we are still amazed at the opportunities we've had to make our own unique style of games and the incredible community of players who enjoy them. When I think back to the earliest days of Bethesda, long before we became part of the family, I believe Bethesda's culture really began with the creative freedom and support for Bethesda Game Studios and the games they make. Robert Altman always understood the value of allowing creatives to be creative that we in our studios are the owners of what we do, so we always feel deeply invested in everything we make. Of course, that comes with its own pressures, but from the very beginning, we knew Bethesda would always have our backs. In fact, everyone here felt that trust instantly when we joined. And we were trusted to take Wolfenstein, this iconic and pioneering first-person franchise created by id Software and give it a fresh start. We wanted to make it our own, while still maintaining that id Software DNA of fast-paced action shooters with a somewhat violent theme, but made with a sense of humor. As a huge fan of id Software and given their history with some of the most classic and best shooters in the world, it was very important for us to develop a Wolfenstein that brought that legacy forward. While the shooting part still is core to the experience, at Machine Games our focus is on the roller coaster ride, bringing together different parts and features to make the full experience something special. An important part of that is the storytelling, and we made our mark building a diverse cast of characters who surrounded our version of B.J. Blazkowicz as he fought Nazis around the world. You still got some Nazi fighting killing skills up in you? How we laid out the plans for our first game, 
Wolfenstein The New Order is a memory very dear to me. We, the core team and the founders of Machine Games got to spend three hot summer weeks in Mesquite, Texas at the id Software offices. Having access to the experience and the knowledge about the franchise that our friends over at id had was extremely valuable while we made our first iterations on the story and the structure of the game. I'm still considering it a career highlight that I, during that time, had my very own id Software email address. Since then, we have made several Wolfenstein games, and over the years, we have managed to build a rather close relationship with our sister studios. Id Software, of course, but also Arcane Studios in Lyon, with whom we share a special relationship since we're both located in Europe. We share similar studio culture and overall development approach, which makes it really easy and also very fun to work together. We feel a connection to Tango in Tokyo as well, and we enjoy the opportunities we have to help each other out with development support and to learn and to share ideas with the other creative and talented world-class teams at Bethesda. And now, at this very moment, we are of course extremely excited about our work on the new Indiana Jones game in collaboration with Todd Howard, one of the greatest creative minds in gaming. It is a true privilege to be in this business, a business that is constantly evolving. And if I look back to when I started modding Quake near 25 years ago now, it's different in so many ways, but still as fun and rewarding as it was back then. Talking about it, we actually have a Quake modding group uh, that get together every Wednesday evening here at Machine Games, and it's so fun. And team building events like these really shows how passionate we still are about gaming. As high as it ever was. And I know that passion will be supported by Xbox in the same way that Bethesda has supported too. Thank you. I'm Harvey Smith, uh, studio director and co-creative director at Arcane Austin. Early on, when we were working on Dishonored, we uh, had these meetings in uh, at Bethesda, you know, to sort of pitch what we had done, show off the most recent milestone. Um, and there was a moment when one of the execs asked about some of the stranger elements that we had in it, sort of 1850s uh, steampunk or gas lamp kind of kind of stuff, uh, and complimented it. Really liked it, and uh, we looked at each other at the time and said. You know, we've kind of been holding back. We love those elements too. They're, we think they're what make the game really distinct. Uh, and the advice we were given wasn't uh, be conservative or be safe. It was like double down on that. And so once we were given that green light, uh, we just rolled hard into what people started calling the whale punk aesthetic of the game. The type of games that we work on, you know, they're a blend of first person shooter and RPG. Not fully one or the other, but there's something distinct, something in the middle. We love simulated elements from the AI to the physics to uh, the player's powers and movement abilities and the way those things can interact uh, in manners that we didn't even foresee. Uh, the environmental storytelling, the locations that we put so much love and lore into. There are also characters in all our games that are very important to us. Uh, Mindy Blanchard was an important character for us. Uh, we launched a game with Billy Lurk, uh, which we were very proud to do. We love that character standing on the stage at the Bethesda Showcase and announcing to the world Dishonored 2 and we rolled out Emily Caldwin as a protagonist for the first time and it was just a super exciting moment and the response we got from players, uh, especially women who at the time didn't have as many representational avatars, all of that is just super important to us. It's not quite the same game that any other person would make and to have the right partners that support us through that is just critical. And it's really the culture that Bethesda set up, uh, that Robert Altman set up, that makes us feel uh, safe to run in the directions we want to run in. So for us, being part of Xbox is, is very similar to when Arcane first joined with uh, Bethesda. You know, it was like, hey, here's a partner we trust, here's a partner who wants to make good games. Uh, and it's just like, you can't do creative work unless you feel like somebody has your back, uh, somebody setting up the right environment for you. And at the end of the day, at the end of your career, it's not about 
you know, which awards you won or how much money you made. It's really about those moments where the players tell you what it was like for them to uh, experience a particular character or a particular combat or a particular stealth moment. Uh, it's just so powerful when they talk about how the game has impacted them and their lives. Our goal is just to keep doing what we love and keep uh, making players happy. Hi, I'm Dinga Bakaba, I'm game director at Arcane Lyon, and I believe I have a different perspective to share, because I joined Arcane after Bethesda acquired us. I joined a studio that I admired deeply, because they made a very specific type of game that some call immersive sims. And I will admit, I was concerned. Would Bethesda allow Arcane to keep doing the kind of games we make? Beloved Empress dead, and everyone thinks you're the killer. And as you can see, the answer is yes. I quickly learned that Bethesda acquired Arcane because they believed in the kind of games we make. But now we had more means, we had more firepower. It was the opportunity to step up our game, basically. And yes, there was challenges, uh, there was hard discussions, but it was always with the goal of making the best arcane games possible. So, I also remember our first midwinter meeting. It's uh, where the heads of studio gather together in Maryland, they present their current projects to the entire company. It's when I discovered Skyrim and Wolfenstein The New Order, uh, The Evil Within, Elder Scrolls Online, you know, and yes, Dishonored was there and uh, uh, we were super proud of showcasing it. So my first thought was, wow, and the second one was to myself, we are not the exception here uh, at Arcane. We, you know, all these studios are doing exactly what they should be doing, each in their own way. And over the years, I've gone from admiration to actually working with those studios. Uh, we've collaborated with Machine Games several times, helping out on the new Colossus, co-developing Youngblood, which is nice because it was always a choice, not a demand. We made connections, we shared our mutual admiration, and it was an opportunity to learn from each other while supporting each other's artistic vision and goals. But I, I do have one major challenge that might only get worse as we join the Xbox family. I still get pretty starstruck around my peers. Like, for instance, I become extremely awkward when I talk with Todd Howard or Shinji Mikami-san, and maybe they cannot tell because I'm so French, but it's pretty bad. So, yeah, I just want to warn everyone at Xbox, now I get to be weird and awkward with you all. I'm Shinji Mikami from Tokyo, Tango Game Max. Uh, Tokyo で、we look forward to join Xbox family. Thank you. First of all, I, I just have to say it's so nice to see all their faces. I know it's on video, but I, I miss them all. I, I've had this unique privilege of being able to travel the world, to, to spend time with these studios and I just, I don't know if everyone knows that we have all these studios around the world, so it's... And we have this interesting thing where we look for some sort of common DNA, I yeah. guess you would say, in terms of what they're about or what they're trying to do, but you can also tell, and listen to these folks, like, well, in one video, you've got the guy who invented survival horror, some folks who took Wolfenstein, which had no dialogue, and suddenly it's got... 
tons of story and character and arcane what they do. Like, it's that sort of being able to diversify while still having some sort of core DNA and, and some shared identities. Yeah, definitely as you're watching all of the pieces, you feel some common threads that come out. One is trust and confidence. Robert's mentioned a lot um, the way that Bethesda supported teams to do new things. And we've said this in Xbox as we've been planning for this moment for so long, this is an opportunity for us to learn as an organization from a team that's done work incredibly well. They've wor you've worked with such a diverse set of studios, giving them a sense of confidence. And you, and you heard the stories that allow them to go and try new creative things in different ways, not stay safe. Like that's the goal as a platform holder and the aspiration that we have. We don't need 15 games that are trying to do the same thing. We would like to try 30 different things across 15 different games. It's even more now when you think about all the studios. So I love just listening and learning from what you and the teams have built and hearing the sense of confidence that the teams have of we can go try to do new things. We can go work with another partner that we have and learn from that really amazing work. And I just can't wait to learn more and more about how you've done that over the years. Now, I do want to highlight one thing, which is we have two more studios that we haven't talked about yet. And there's a reason for that, which is, well, they're not working on games that we're ready to talk about. So, and they just acquired, but we, we need to mention uh, our colleagues up in Wisconsin and in Nova Scotia as well. Yes, yeah, so uh, Roundhouse Studios joined us yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. um, and like Pete said, they're in Wisconsin. And then we also... Um, added another mobile studio to the family called Alpha Dog. And so we're not quite ready to talk about what they're up to. Ooh, but. Up and, up teams and working on Coast secret Coast. projects. Come on, that's what everyone <laughs> Plus they have amazing hockey jerseys. Alpha Dog makes studio hockey. Well, there they're in go. Nova Scotia, and, and they're oh, amazing. They're the envy of everybody Ski, else. Texas to Nova Scotia. I'm we there, cover right? everything. Phil's ready, right? You ready to go to Nova Scotia, Phil? Cool. I'm ready to go to Tokyo. Okay. Yeah, oh. I mean, go see Tango, a studio that I just have such respect for the history of the creations there. I've talked for a long time about our desire to have more of a first party presence mm -hmm. um, in Japan. Uh, this is a, a great step there. So, I mean, just thinking about the map of where these teams are and just talking about all the games they're working on, but I can't wait to spend more time with the Tango team and get to know them. You may have forgotten about one important studio that we haven't heard from yet. Oh, Bethesda Game Studios. You wanted to talk <laughs> yes, about them? Yes, I know we had Todd here with us earlier, um, but Ashley also, uh, shared some messages with us about about the studio there and, and their their thoughts on this partnership. Hi, I'm Ashley Chang, the managing director of Bethesda Game Studios. <laughs> on behalf of the over 420 developers across all our studios in Montreal, Austin, Dallas and Rockville, I'd like to thank the leadership team at Xbox and Microsoft for the warm welcome to the Xbox family. You know, when we started 20 years ago, we were like an indie rock band, a small team of around 40 developers, and we had the complete freedom to make the kinds of open world role-playing games that we're known for today. This amazing studio that I'm privileged to work at is a testament to the leadership of our creative visionary and studio head, Todd Howard. It's also a credit to Robert Altman, who we will miss very much. Without his trust and support, we would not be the studio we are today. One of the reasons for our success, we've made a lot of games together. I believe the value of a team is the sum of the problems they've solved together. The more games ship together, the stronger the team gets. After Morrowin, rather than immediately work on a direct sequel, Todd had a grand vision for what our studio could be. And we asked ZeniMax if we could spend the next four years to make our next game. As always, Robert and the rest of ZeniMax gave us the support and trust to accomplish that vision. The next game was Oblivion, and that was the start of an amazing industry-leading run, not just for us, but also for Bethesda and ZeniMax, too. Today, the team working on Starfield have all worked on several open-world RPGs together. This shared experience and chemistry doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time and is a lot of hard work. Our relationship with Xbox starts back at our indie rock days, too. We were working on Morrowind, and we weren't sure if and anyone would want to play this kind of game on a console. But Xbox team said yes, and they were supportive from the start. They even did the disc layout for us, which is something we had no experience doing. Ever since, Xbox has been a great partner, always ready to help solve problems like figuring out how to optimize performance and push the hardware as much as we can to pushing other boundaries, like letting our modding community share full Skyrim and Fallout 4 mods on Xbox. 
Since Morrowind, we watched ZeniMax grow all around us. We grew too as a studio, and as more and more studios joined the family. We have worked with ZeniMax Online Studios from the start on The Elder Scrolls Online, a relationship that continues today. What they've accomplished with that game is remarkable and a huge inspiration to us. The spirit of mutual admiration and support has been an important part of ZeniMax across all the studios. We have all contributed in big and small ways to each other's games, and we continue to be each other's biggest fans. As we work on our next generation of games, we can think of no better place to be than here at Xbox. No matter how crazy the idea, the team at Xbox always says, yes, let's try it. On behalf of everyone at BGS, I want to thank everyone who played Morrowind back in the day and every game we've made since. Sincerely, thank you for playing our games. We couldn't have done it without your support, and we hope you were excited to see all the great things we're working on for the future. Thank you. So, Phil, as Ashley mentioned, obviously a big part of our relationship really is owed to the Morrowind product and, and us working with you all and saying, hey, we're going to stop doing just PC-only stuff and try this console thing and see how that works out. You know, for me, as a, a player of your games, you've always challenged yourself. If I think about whether it's bringing a, a traditional PC genre to console, the work you've done around VR, around streaming, around modding on console. Like it's hard for us as a platform to think about the pushes that we've had from a publisher who said, we wanna go try something. And at first, of course, we're defensive. Well, I don't know about that. And then we start to think and work together. So many of those innovations, not just for Xbox, but in the game industry, were born right here at Bethesda. And it's, I think about the path forward and that continued push for us to evolve our platform and service is gonna be fantastic. Well, and I think that's part of where some of that excitement comes from, right? Which is being a developer and having this kind of passion and even getting to work more closely hand in hand with the folks who are making those decisions, pushing those technologies, whether it's streaming or console power or whatever it is that, you know, there, it is different when you're inside versus external. I mean, one of the things Todd and I were actually talking about this morning was, to be able to sit down with the teams here and go through our 10-year roadmap, which almost by definition is wrong because we don't know what's <laughs> going to happen 10 years from now, but we have an idea. Like we have some plans mm -hmm. and to have that full disclosure with stuff that's just kind of crazy spaghetti on the wall ideas and stuff obviously that's sooner that's a little more solid, hopefully. Um, and, and to share that with you and get the feedback. I think Sarah did a good job talking about the fact that we used to always bring our console here first. We'd bring it under a shield of darkness like, and, and then bring it and then watch Todd give us kind of the thumbs up and <laughs> thumbs down on the design of our console. Um, you know, but that's feedback because when you're inside of your own bubble, it's easy to believe what you've done. Mm -hmm. And we talk about these trust bubbles of everybody on the team and what we believe. You heard it in, in the pieces here of your studios have a trust bubble with themselves. They're willing to share stuff with their sibling studios and get that feedback. And to me, this just expanded the people that smart people that we can talk to about the plans that we have that have a shared vision of where gaming's going. All right. Anything else? Do we cover it all of us? I think so. I, I'm just incredibly excited for the future. I'm so happy that you took the time to, to come visit us here in Maryland. I look forward to learning from you, uh, from working with you on this summer event that we've promised now. Um, it, it's just <laughs> the future is exciting. Well, we officially can start working together today, yes. right? This is day yes. one. And, First uh, meeting right after this. And it's genuine. <laughs> Phil says, like, don't be shy. Give us the feedback. We want to learn from yeah. you guys as much as, uh, as, we can, as we can share back. And I'm excited to meet even more players. There is a lot of fans on lot, our side sure, that have grown so. up playing your games and huge fans of your games. So awesome. you no know, shortage of love on our end. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic part. Aaron, any final thoughts? Um, no, I just, listen, uh, you know, I'm the marketing guy, so I'm just going to sort of say, listen, this is the start. So I would say that, you know, we're, we haven't got everything figured out yet. Uh, we're now officially able to work together. I think what we've achieved between the teams um, uh, to have 20 games to be able to go in as a gift for fans to celebrate this moment is really special. That is a lot of work. Uh, lot so of work. we're trying to get these up and, and, you know, a lot of these are older games that we're getting up and running on PC Game Pass and things like that. But I think it's a great gift for fans. Um, and so I think we're really excited about that. You know, as Aaron said, you know, we're, we're excited to go jointly work on stuff together as we think about big beats together. We think about all these studios under one umbrella. We talked about, you know, 
some of the greatest RPGs ever made, the greatest RPG creators now, all part of one team. You know, the greatest shooter tech, the greatest shooter franchise is all part of one team. And, you know, beyond that, the innovation and the creativity and the deep storytelling. And so it's just an incredible, incredible time to be an Xbox gamer and to be in this industry. And so um, I couldn't be more excited. Same. Feel the same. Phil? You know, I'll, I'll start, and I know this is something we're doing for everybody to watch, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with, uh, the teams here, and what a commitment we have and I have personally um, to building an environment and a culture where creators feel like they can absolutely do their best work. Mm. Uh, and that is something that's at our core. It's something that Robert and I talked a lot about leading into this, of how do we go create a world-class creative organization together uh, and kind of in, you know, in his memory, I want to deliver on that. And I have a commitment to that, to the teams here. And the result of that for the millions of people who love playing games, who love what we're doing at Xbox, is that you're going to get an amazing set of games to go play. Uh, from genres across the board, as you said, Aaron, um, amazing detail, uh, the concentration on the craft. And this is all about the mission that we have of the power of play, to unite people across the planet, three billion people playing video games, we want to ensure that anybody who wants to will be able to experience the great games that we're going to build together. Um, whether that's the technology that we're pushing on or business models to ensure that more people have access to the voices of different creators with different perspectives telling their stories on our platform. I'm just a fundamental believer in the power of video games to help bring this planet closer together. And I think <laughs> it's a time when we need it. Uh, and I, I love what we're going to be able to do together here. I Perfectly said. We're, we're so excited to, for this partnership and, and, to, and to get going. We've been chopping at the bit for a while and uh, you can't wait. We got some really exciting stuff coming, coming down the pipe. Um, so thank all of you uh, for joining us today. Thanks to everybody who tuned yeah, in to, to watch. We appreciate your time. We hope you enjoyed a, a little look at, at sort of who we are and what we're bringing to the table as, as Bethesda and Xbox come together in this amazing new partnership and, and we can't wait to see what's next. So. Thank you all for joining us. Take care. Have a good night. Signal detected. Iris, what's happening? External camera 15. Camera 10. They're here. Send them in. Nice. Yeah.